Captain Morgan's Spice Gold Rum. That is actually my favorite drink. Alize Blue. If you get any other flavor of Alize, it is absolutely shit. Hey, hey guys, what's going on? It's Sport the Aussie here, your favorite motorsport manager doing the F1 mod challenge. Finally got race engineering up into Formula One. Got them on the points for the first race. Debut into 10th, one point. One point. But just shy of getting sixth overall for us to get sixth and to please our target for our chairman. We're a little bit shy there just because the way the race went, the way the car is. Remember, overall, we had the ninth best car on the grid. We had the ninth best drivers in the competition. Let me just confirm that right now because that might be a little bit different now. Drivers were still ninth. Car, ninth. Staff, ninth, which is going to be race mechanics when you do pits. So it's actually very hard to work out anything now. We are developing our car. We just recently finished doing some new brakes and that's improved it greatly. Look at the difference. Brakes went up from having a total of 902 to 954 as a total once we fully get them uh, performing well. Think about it like this. We are improving much greater than most of the other teams are because we stacked everything in improvability for this particular car in this championship. So I'm actually really happy with that. This is more of a battle of time. Can we get the car improved enough before we get booted from the team? Because I'm confident we're going to be able to walk away for the next you know, second half of the season and start to fight with some of these more tougher teams, at least in the top five teams, you know, rather than, you know, the top eight, top nine. So that's going to be a bit of a battle of attrition. Sponsors, we have some more sponsor offers because we are at 54.3%, which puts us up to three stars. Yippee doo doo. Petrobras, BR, uh, Pepe Gine, London, or Nova, two stars. So it's really the first two. One's 15 races, the other's 11. Obviously, Petronas, Petro, Petro Brothers is going to be the definite one that we're going to pick because it's $2 million up front. And the other one's got a much lower bonus requirement. That's a silly offer right there. We've even got to double the bonus. The only difference is that that last 11, that race is, that last is 15. So we're going to be picking that one 110%. That's definitely sure what we're going to do right there. That's a good buy for us. Actually, it's a really good, really good sign up. Quite happy with that. How does it look on the car? Just around the side there. Not too bad. I like the Johnny Walker ones here. The Johnny Walker just sticks out right there with its fine font that it's got and a little walking Johnny Walker uh, gentleman what are we going to pick we're going to pick 10th or above because we are fighting that position realistically let's uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves but we're going to stack super soft tires have a couple of medium sets in there as well for our qualifying and also race sessions it's going to be a full race of how many laps where's the lap count oh we don't have one 32 laps 5 kilometers that's actually pretty far it's expected to rain for both qualifying and the race. Mm, that'll be interesting. Deceleration is the biggest part. So is brakes and the engine is useful. Part fitting. We fitted everything with Mickey Schumacher's car once again, except for the brakes because they've got low reliability, the ones that we just built. So I'm just stacking Schumacher with the more reliable components because this is going to be, again, another war of attrition for us. We've only got one uh, rules of risk for Schumacher's car and then we've balanced it out with Alexander Rossi's car having a risk will break there as well. Hopefully we don't get picked up by the officials. Touch wood. Alrighty guys, in typical Suzuka fashion, we have some crazy weather out there for qualifying right now. It looks as though it's going to be wet for the first half of this session. So I refuse to go out. I don't think it's worth going out there and doing any times with this dampness on the track. A couple of the other teams are actually going to go out and try to check out the track. Alright guys, we've picked a really good window to go out and do our laps now. Schumacher's now just going around to form his lap. As you can see, there's like a two to three minute window to be able to do a lap should we get around in time. And that's going to be the case here. We are going to get around for Mickey Schumacher to start his lap. In fact, we're not only going to be able to do that, but we're going to be able to wind back his car to get the tire temps in the right sections as well just before it begins. So if we slow it down just a little bit now for that minute and a half, it's absolutely going to be beautiful for him. Great conditions. It might not be the same for Rossi. So we're just going to get Rossi to speed up and go around as fast as he possibly can. There we go. We've got the tire temps in. Brake temps perfect. That is an awesome start for him. Track grip is going to be at its peak for him as he just kicks off his lap. And it should really start to shine for him as he goes around. And now he starts his flying lap. We might just get Rossi to go ahead and start his uh, lap now and just get it down as much as we possibly can. That window isn't going to be open for very long, so we don't want to be mucking around too much. Here we go, starting tire temps are going to be good for him as well. Brake temps a little bit out, but that's okay. We'll deal with that later. Schumacher is only down by one second at the moment. That would be good enough to put him on second position. 
in between a Hamilton and Habsburg hamburger sandwich right in the middle there, we would be the meat patty. Now, provided Schumacher doesn't get held up, look at him. He's, being, he's fighting with these other cars that seem to be doing their in-laps or out-laps. We've picked the best time to do it. Look at that. No one else is going to be able to do a much better time than us, should they not have gone out and done a lap right now. It's going to start to trickle down for Rossi in just a second, which is going to be a little bit unfortunate. He might get around in time to, in order to do it. We got a fourth position because of that. And that's it. We are not going to be able to do another lap with these conditions. Look at that. That was perfect. We got his set up to 98% because we went out and did a quick lap to check it out. We got Rossi up to 99%. Where is Rossi right now? Where, where would he be on the grid? He's down by 3.6, 3.367 seconds. That would push him up into the top 10. To have both cars into the top 10 would be absolutely amazing as well. Can he do it right here? He crosses the line. 10th position, so we've got both cars into the top 10, which is amazing. Hopefully it starts to pour. Look at it. Right on cue, the rain just starts to come out as he completes his lap. That's a good one, Simi, right there. Give us a thumbs up, Simi. Yeah, high uh, five. Ah. Eh. Oh. oh, sorry. That hurt my racing hands. Look at our knowledge bonuses so far. Our knowledge bonuses are going for Mickey Schumacher, Alexander Ross. We're going to do exactly the same intermediate tires, race trim, because look at it. It's going to be absolutely drizzling down. At the start of this race, it's going to be up and down. I don't know if it's going to dry out for the remainder of it once we get beyond the 15 lap mark there. Possibly cast it up. Everything looks perfect. All those smiley, 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 smiley. Driver strategy. Attack off the line. We always seem to attack off the line because we don't want to lose many positions. Now, the odd thing here is for the grid, it's Hamilton, Ricardo, Hulkenberg, Vettel, Hulkenberg. Absolutely doing an amazing job to get up there into third position. Habsburg, fifth, sixth for Terry Bottas. And then seventh for our boy Schumacher. While it was raining at the end of that session, Habsburg and also, who was it? Daniel Ricciardo or someone up there, Daniel Ricciardo I think it was, went out there on intermediate tyres and was able to go only 2.5 seconds slower than the, than the pole lap. So technically, Daniel Ricciardo is faster than us when racing on intermediate tyres in wet conditions when we race on slick tyres, on super soft slick tyres, in dry conditions. That's how big the gap is between the cars. So the grid order is all over the place. There's Verstappen, um, Button is in there as well, Magnussen, Perez, Giovinazzi, Alonso, Van Dorn, Rossi is in 15th, 16th for Reyes, for Ruku, Palmer, Surikun, and Kubica. So we're going to be fighting for position along here. We, we are really happy with where we are. Hopefully we don't have to... Um, get crunched at the start too much. These tyres will technically last 14 laps for us. So let's get this race underway. I'm pretty excited for it. I think we're going to be able to do the job. Should we have the pace? We've already looked at the grid. Into the start. One red light, two red light, three, four to the five. And it is go at Suzuka GP. It is wet Suzuka GP with a little bit of drizzle at the start. Our line for the queue started to get Absolutely uh, like a bit of a, sh a, a trolley start when everyone just went into the back of each other. Schumacher has already dropped down into ninth position. That is not a great start for us. Rossi's jumped up in the 14th. That's a bit of a surprise. But Schumacher just didn't get off the line good. He seemed to be backed up into other people. And it's a shame that the way this game works is that when you start off the grid, I reckon the cars should be able to weave in and out of teams. And so they seem to get in these two lines and just absolutely struggle for position. But Schumacher... Back in the 10th position and getting swamped heavily. Giovinazzi now all over his back with Alonso trailing behind him. Alonso being our old driver at the McLaren seat. Just goes straight by. He overtakes two cars in the one corner. And we are, despite having a 99% setup with the car that we're currently in, not faring that well for the young uh, Shumi. What are his traits in the wet? I'm actually not 100% sure. I believe it's, it's okay. It's not great, but it's okay. There goes Furuku. There goes Van Dorn, I should say. And unfortunately, that's put us back in the 12th position. So we are now technically out of the points, out of our bonus. But this is a war of attrition. We're going to go back into neutral mode. We will make it up later in the race. I'm not giving up just yet. Believe me, this is a long way to go. We're going to cross the line for the 8th lap. Let's have a look at these lap times and the cars around us just to get an idea how everyone else is traveling. I've got the car into overtake mode because we will get lapped at some point. Our park condition is fine for us to be able to do that. Let's have a quick cheeky look. Our last lap was a 140 flat. The car behind us, a 142. Perez in front of us doing a 139, but the two cars in front of him were doing 141s. So we seem to be off the pace quite considerably, even though we are in overtake mode and everyone else is not even, they're on neutral mode and they're even in the uh, driver strategy of conserve mode. So that is the difference between the cars of our, tr of our car compared to everyone else around us. So that's what I'm talking about, trying to get that improvability 
trade up and then just stack it. We don't want to get behind these guys and then just cause a bit of a racket. So let's go back into neutral mode. I only went to overtake so I could keep in touch with the cars ahead. We don't want to lose out too much to them. Car tire, uh, bleh, tire temps are starting to absolutely rip these tires to pieces. But the train ahead of us, 11th, 12th, 13th, seem to just be fighting each other. And that's why they haven't come out of touch with us. That's why we're able to still creep within these guys a little bit. And just keep within eye distance, watching them from a bit afar. But let's have a look at this next lap as they go around. This is going to be lap 9. What are the lap times? Then they've all gone a little bit faster again, which is not a surprise. But we are going to be punching above our weight. The only way we're going to be able to sneak a point here again is if something bad happens to the people around us. Like a crash, a mechanical issue... Anything that kind of puts our foot a little bit ahead. Getting 7th as a starting position was a bit of a godsend. And we were probably the car at the front that deserved it the least. So it's really important that you do your own practice sessions. Because if you do computer simulations or AI simulations, you, let, you do instant practice and you don't take yourself. There are a lot of times where you miss out on in typical spots like that where you can do your fastest lap. Should you have just selected it correctly and been able to jump up the order a little bit. But I'm just watching Rossi and also um, Schumacher's tire tread, 44%, 47% uh, respectively. How are the guys ahead of us? Perez is on 41, Farouk is on 36, and Magnus is on 35. So they're on a bit less than Schumacher. They're actually on significantly less. That's probably because they've been racing a little bit more than we have. And here comes the dry weather, but it's not going to be dry for very long. In fact, is it going to start to get dry? If we can last... To about lap 17, pit for super soft tires, then do about four to five laps. That will put us in a winning window. Because you always want to pit, if there's an area where it's like four to five laps where it's going to be dry, you're always better off pitting, getting the laps that you necessarily need, and then doing the laps on those tires, because you will be 15 to 12 seconds slower, literally 15 to, t um, no, 15 to 20 seconds slower a lap. Should you have done the, a lap on tires in the wrong conditions? That's a really big header for us. Bit of a risky strategy right now. I've actually got Schumacher into complete backup mode in the hope that we can reach that lap 17 mark without pitting. It's going to be a risk that I'm willing to take. I feel like these guys aren't going to be able to make the difference up. And if they did, if they were able to catch to the back of us, I feel like we've just escaped with the right tire strategy. I probably could have pit for Rossi just then. He's going to be out of the race anyway. But I probably um, can go the rest of the way with Schumacher on those tires. Provided we can just get two to th two more laps out of him. Two more laps. Go to soft tires. Do four to five laps on those. They will be absolutely smoking. The backup mode is going to make us significantly slower. Let's be honest. Let's have a look at this lap time. The last lap time was a 141.6. I reckon we're going to be... Oh, we're actually going a little bit faster, surprisingly, because I think the weather's um, taken up a little bit. Where is Hamilton in relation to everyone? He's still lapping around. Here we go for Rossi. Let's pit for Rossi. He's going to be out anyway, so it's just important that we just fix his car when it needs to be fixed. Park condition, fast strategy. Just get him in, get him out. No dramas there for him. Oh, you know what? Let's just pretend he's actually going to be in contention for this race. Let's not pit for him just yet. Let's go to the intermediate tires, get to that next stop area. Then if we have to pit for a part, we will. The show far so good, Schumacher in 11th. The gap to Furuku, Perez and Magnussen, who we leapfrogged, is actually still significantly big enough that we've benefited from that. What was his last lap time? That's what we're looking at, a 140.2. So he's actually not doing much slower times than what he was when he was going in medium mode. So we're off to, from conservative into backup, and he's still doing that good of a job into 11th position. This strategy could pay off. We just need to do one more lap. We're at 25% now. Just get one more lap, one and a bit more laps, and we will be in the sweet spot. Let's allow Hamilton to go by. Hopefully he can go by without making too much of a rackus, racket, and he can just quickly trim by us. But we've leapfrogged the guys behind us, so this is working so far for us. We're now holding up Faruku Perez. And Magnussen is too far behind. So at the moment, we're actually contending for position. Faruka and Perez want to pass us. We're defending two cars all at the same time. Can Schumacher hold them off? He's been able to hold off Schumacher for quite some time. We might need to pit for those tires now. Hopefully, it starts to drain really fast. The dry conditions are going to come out for us. No one's going to pit just yet. Could I do one more lap with Schumacher on those tires? I think I could. I think it's going to be worth it. If we can just do one more lap 
and get away with it and then go to the soft compounds, this is going to benefit us. Those guys will not be able to leapfrog us too much. We've been able to leapfrog Magnuson still. That was a huge thing for us. So, strategy-wise, it's kind of working out. It could be a little bit better. We are going to be bleeding a little bit time to the guys out around us. But with one less pit stop, one less worry on our minds. There's nothing to really pit for there. We're going to be coming in for dries. If we had pitted for the dries just then, I strongly and utterly believe that we... Where is he on the... Yeah, let's go to soft tires for him as well. Pitch strategy. Get him to pit for pretty much everything. Yuck, look at that car. Fast stop. I believe... I strongly believe had we have not pitted for Schumacher... Had we pitted for Schumacher then and he came out with the softer compounds, he would have absolutely have struggled getting around. So right now we're going in for softs. Is anyone else going to come in for softs? Habsburg has come... Has just gone out. So he's gone out and he's done the same thing we've done. Except he's lost to... He's lost position because of that. We now drop back into 17th position... We've got a charging... Who was that behind us? Who is that guy? That's 18th position. That is... I can't even see because there's this lap timer ahead of us. It's a bit damp. No, we want you to stay out for as long as you possibly can. Go into overtake mode. Go into high mode. Just deal with the fact it's going to be wet for just half a lap. And then you can come out. He's all around... He's just... See, he's been able to make up that spot quite easily. That's because the conditions have come to us. Now, we can push. In fact, we can go into overtake mode and push this car as much as we possibly can. I'm happy to do that to try and make up some time. We're now getting lapped by who the hell is that? That is actually Vettel. So hopefully we can just stream behind Vettel, get in his slipstream. Now's the time to push. We've got fuel to burn. We've got tires to burn. This is only going to be a couple of laps. So we're going to have to do that. And we're going to finish on the intermediate tires. Everyone else has come in the pits for their stop. Park condition, we have a lot of reliability. No problems right there. 13th is Magnuson. We're just behind him. He's not going to be that much of an issue for us. If we can just pick him off here, we've got everything into overburn mode. So does he. Now, can we make it stick? He, remember, he was threatening us last race, and now we're threatening him. We seem to not be able to just get by him right now. It's a, it's a bit worrying for us. There we go. Magnuson's indicated he's going in the pits because he has some sort of a mechanical issue. He's held us up for about half a lap. That was a huge bummer. How much time did we waste? About four seconds by doing that lap. Now, where is Perez in relation to us? 10th and 11th, both of them have some sort of a mechanical issue by the looks of it. There is Shumi, he's doing a great job there for us. Can we get into the points? We're two spots shy of just nibbing ourselves into the points. We need to do this. We need to do this just to get the bonus money to keep our championship alive. We literally need money. There we go. Jansen Button has retired. Jansen Button is out of this race. That is a position for us up in a 12th. We were 13th, and that's why we've been able to leapfrog into 12th position. How's everything else going? Let's have a look at these park conditions. Everything is looking okay. We can probably do one more lap. It will start to rain, and it won't get damp very fast. We'll be able to snicker around one last time. And how's everyone else going? What, what's their strategy going to be? Are they going to come in straight away? Let's just start to slow it down a little bit while we start to have a bit more of an in-depth look at this lap. We've got not enough fuel in order to get the end, so now we're going to start to wind everything back. We're going to push, push, push for this last lap that we're going to be able to do before we come in for intermediate tyres. Let's already give the notice that we are going to pit for intermediate, so we're going to come in for intermediate. Pitch strategy is going to be fast. Everything looks okay. We can get to the end on those um, park conditions. 41% tyre tread left. Going into fast forward mode. Ross is in 19th. His fastest lap was just then a 136. So he's significantly slower than Schumacher in that car. Not a big surprise. Faruku has a mechanical issue. How far ahead is he? He's that far ahead. He's going to be slowing down, but he will be able to make it to the pits. I think he's going to be able to make it to the pits. He's not going to retire just yet. Here comes the rain. That's pretty much saved Faruku. Because he's coming in anyway, it's pretty much saved the fact that he has to pit. Now, he's got a mechanical issue to fix. We should be a lot faster out to the pits. We've come out just ahead of him. Now, we're also going to set... Rossi to come in as well, come in for those intermediates. Let's get him to fix everything to make sure we've got the reliability up because we will fix him at uh, at the end of the next race. It's an unfortunate situation for us that um, old mate behind us, what was his face, Faruku, was able to come into the pits for that part. It's really unfortunate that he wasn't able to get stuffed around. There is Shumi, he's just passed us as well. Faruku still smoking goes around us. We couldn't even fight for that position. That's how much of a difference it was for us. Schumacher now is in 12th position, and we're literally fighting for our life. There is Hamilton, he now finally pits. He's going to come out, he's actually going to come out on a used set, so we shrubbed in those tires a little bit. We're actually getting overtaken by, who's that? Is that Button? That's going to be Button, isn't it? 
That is Surikun. So Surikun in the RGP looks to be faster than us, despite the fact that he is actually a lap down in this situation. But we need two cars to retire at the last part of this race in order for us to leapfrog. So we're going to go back into neutral mode because we don't want to have any reliability concerns. We don't want to risk it and then blow something up. Max Verstappen has a mechanical issue. We need them to retire. Look, he goes straight in the pits again. So he, he had a mechanical issue at the right time. I wish that happened to Faruku. Had Faruku started a lap and then had the mechanical issue, we would have gone surely by him with a much bigger gap. There is another pit stop for Hulkenberg, Habsburg, and Perez. Are we going to come out ahead? Yes, we are. We've jumped into 11th position. Habsburg is just ahead of us now. Still has some sort of a mechanical problem there as well. We can't push. I imagine if we try to push, it's not going to be that much of a difference anyway. Because the park condition, look, things are starting to wind down for us. And it's now about trying to get to the end. Is Perez going to be able to threat us, threaten us for position? No, he is not going to be able to threaten us for position. We're one, literally one, one spot away from getting into the top 10. When we start with this rookie team, one of the hardest things is the fact that we don't have a factory and development center that are at level four. They're at level one, so we can only fix the reliability of four parts, and we only have 20 staff. Whereas McLaren, for example, you could fix eight parts at a time and have 80 staff. So we are at a bit of a disadvantage when it comes to that and these guys being able to fix their reliability. So we are punching above our weight. The GP2 team, race engineering, being promoted to Formula One, can we make anything of it? I'm hoping someone else retires. We only need one more retirement in order to leapfrog. We just got some big news. Volteri Bottas has retired with a mechanical issue in fifth position. So we should be able to leapfrog into tenth. Simi, come over here, Simi. Give us a cheer. Give us something. Give us an A. A. What Give us a B. I don't know. Give us a C. C. A, B, C. <laughs> Easy as one, two, three. I'm telling you right now, we're actually going to be able to nab the points position. Where is Perez in relation to us? He's still too far behind. Is there anyone that we can actually nab a position from? No, not really. They have to have some sort of mechanical fault. Hamilton's also lapped us again, so that means we're actually going to be finishing on the next lap. Can we pass Bottas in time? I think we can. He's still rotating around the track. We should be able to leapfrog him. There we go. Because he retired at that part of the circuit, that means we'd be able to pass him there. We're 10th We've officially hit our sponsor mark of 10th or above. We've gotten one point. I don't think it's going to be enough to get 6th overall for the team. Will it be? I don't think so. How many teams are there? There is Mercedes, Red Bull, McLaren, Ferrari, Force India. And then there's us. 6th. That's because Williams had both drivers retire. Yeah, baby. That was a bit of luck. So the chairman is actually going to be really satisfied with this result. I am completely stumped. That is a huge break for us yet again. 10th. I don't know if we can keep doing it like this, guys. The difference between our car and the cars behind us is just... Wow. When reliability is no longer a concern, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Hopefully we don't get pinged for an illegal component. So come over here. Don't just laugh at me. I'm dancing. I'm doing the, the winning dance. Look at that. That was orchestrated to a T. Hans Zimmer style. Rush. Now pray to Voodoo that we don't get screwed over by the rules. Risk of rule break is medium. Simi, don't look. Is it going to say anything? Does it say anything? Tell me. It's still loading. Wait. What? No, that's rules. good. Oh, no rules broken. Yeah. Yay. Oh, 10th spot. Yeah. Look at that. We get two points in the championship. Mickey Schumacher is officially coming second behind Button and the American Santino Faruqi. I hope that's how you pronounce his name. How would you pronounce it? Ferusi? Ferusi. Okay, Faruki, Ferusi. It doesn't matter. It does not matter what his name is. The Rock says this. Know your role. Shut your mouths. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's not what he says, right? Shumi, look at this. Oh, Chairman, you came six. Expected result is six position. Uh, uh, 4% happiness. That's gonna give it, that's gonna buy us a little bit more time. That's pretty low in happiness. Yeah, look, he's not a happy chappy. He's like, he's, he's Spanish, you know, he can't be happy in Spain. You know. Alfonso de Orleans. Bourbon, he drinks bourbon. bourbon. So yeah. underneath the driver's name is their favorite drink, and if you can get them their favorite drink, they give you more happiness. Can you pass so the drinks behind So drinking and driving? Huh, let's see if we've got any bourbon. I don't think we do. All right, let's see. This is actually my favorite. Captain Morgan's Spice Gold Rum, that is actually my favorite drink. Wait. Next. What do we got? We got Bacardi Breezer. 
That's a simi drink. We got another Captain Morgan. We should just like add the two there together to make 1.5 liters or whatever the hell it is. And Alizé. Alizé Blue. If you get any other flavor of Alizé, it is absolutely shit. Red, passion fruit, whatever the hell it's called. It's terrible. What else do we have here? Jacob's Creek? M Moscato? Minchinberry... Minchinberry Blush. We've got another bottle of Captain Morgan's. We also have another bottle of Captain Morgan's. What is going on right now? What else do we have here? We've got another Moscato. That's it. We don't have any bourbon? What the fuck is this? That's a fucking candle. Don't give me that shit. <laughs> Can't drink that. Anyway, guys, I guess we're going to drink up right now with um, having a bit of a victory celebration. Should I take a shot right now? Maybe when we get on the podium, when we get on the next podium, I'll have a shot. Whatever you guys want me to drink, let me know in the comment section down below. Whatever gets the most amount of votes. When we get our next podium, I will pop a drink. I'll do a shot of whatever you want. There's, you've got this to choose from. Captain Morgan, Bacardi, Alizé, Captain Morgan, Gold Spice versus Jamaican Black Rum. Black Rum, yuck. Gold Spice is the shit. Alizé Blue, this hasn't been cracked. I don't know what it's doing there. I love that vodka taste though. Anyway guys, it's been a spot the Aussie video. Be sure to subscribe, like the video if you enjoy it so far. Let's just get it to peek down a little bit here, down there. Look at that. That's all the drinks we got for today. Be sure to check us out next time. And um, yeah, let me know what drink you guys want me to have a shot of when we get our next podium. I'll check you guys out shortly. Pssh.